now okay okay after our technical uh challenges we're good <laughs> so yeah you were just telling me about your little camera because you're not on your laptop camera and i once had this idea for an invention invention i called it the piggy caster because it was going to be like a little pig and and it was going to stick on top of your camera and also have for its ears it was going to have lights <gasps> and i was going to do that because um i I wanted it to be a pig to remind people to smile when they were on camera. Oh, that's so... I felt like it should be a funny toy so that like you would always be like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be smiling. I love the idea of bringing like childlike essence into something that's supposed to be like professional. Right. Uh, like I love the idea. Yeah. Cause it's so easy for us to forget all that and like get caught up in all like the jazzy schmazzy stuff. So right. uh, yeah. Okay. So when is that happening? <laughs> That's a great no, that's, idea. That's one of Tanya's great ideas that goes on her website. That's called, you know, my great ideas. And I just give them away because I don't have time to do them. They're not what I want to do. Go ahead and take them. No biggie. Yeah. Send me, send me a, send me a prototype. <laughs> send, me, send me a percentage. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, dude. That's so great. I love this background. I've never seen this before. It's, yeah, it's the corner of my bedroom. Is that, like, I'm literally on my bed, and that's, like, our driveway to get out of, off the property. I love it, but I love that it's so bright. I actually love your whole lighting and setup there. You like my teal walls? I love your teal walls. <laughs> I love your silver Buddha looking, like, she's right above you, like, he's right above you there. Yeah, uh, I love it. I f it feels really zen, peaceful, and, like, I feel protected when I sleep. I remember when I first put it up, I was like, is that going to feel creepy? <laughs> Some <laughs> head over. And I thought, no, man, it's freaking Buddha. <laughs> ah, no. Yeah. I'm going to be so protected. Yeah. And it just reminds me because it's such a presence. It, it, like, it's, ah, it reminds me to breathe. Yeah. yeah. That's a really big one for me. So it's just like, yeah. So thanks. I'm glad you like it. Pure one, 70% off. Wow. <laughs> you mean like recently? Yeah, I maybe in the last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would say in the last year. I, yeah. I don't know if you saw this, but I just saw this. Um, uh, J. Crew just declared bankruptcy. Really? Uh, yeah. And I was like, and, and I saw it as, you know, first casualty of COVID. And I'm like, well, I'm sure it's not the first, but um, yeah, you know, Pier One stuff, houses full of stuff, you know? Yeah. Where is that going to go? I, you know, J. Crew goes back to me in college. Um, I, I had a whole closet full of their stuff. And wow. it's so interesting to me uh, what this is all going to mean, right? Yeah. And what it's actually getting us to really focus on, like, like, the whole idea of what's like truly genuinely necessary. So I, I just like, w when I have been on Facebook, I've tried to avoid it. <laughs> I've avoided it with the plague. Um, I noticed like one of my friends was speaking about how she used to go regularly to the supermarket. And now she realizes, wow, that there's so many resources that get wasted there, like time, gasoline, money, how it's impacting the environment. Just like, you know, that, that ride and, like her energy attention that she's now putting into her family. Yeah. And her creativity. Yeah. And her business and all the things. And I just thought, wow, like little things like that, we didn't even realize. Like it's, it's really shining for me anyways, it's been shining a really bright light on all the superfluous stuff that I've either uh, held on to, uh, thought I needed or felt like I needed to get <laughs> that I'm like, I notice I'm just like no longer striving for that. And, uh, and, you, and I, I, you didn't have a lot of stuff to begin with. And anyway. I didn't have a, no. And I'm like super minimalist. Yeah. Like I was like pretty much homeless for like seven years. So, and, and not like nomadic home, you know, like that's like the, the millennial thing. It's like, yeah, nomadic. Like, and I was just like, nomadic is when you choose it. Like I was just really in a very disempowered place where I was, I, I literally like lost all that. Today is the anniversary of what catalyzed that actually. And uh, I said that with you yesterday in our call. Hey, but it's just Mayo. We don't even know who you are yet. We, okay, you're Sylvia. <laughs> oh, I'm Sylvia. Hey, I'm Sylvia Ferrero. <laughs> this is yeah. Sylvia Ferrero, my most amazing 
one of the most inspiring <laughs> people I know. I call her when I want to feel good about myself because she just says nice things like all the time. She can't even help it. You know, she just, they just come <laughs> out of her mouth. <laughs> I so only speak it like I see it better. <laughs> like it, it's such a, yeah, but it's not like, it's not like a, like empty flattery and stuff. I think there used to be a time in my life where that was more the case, but it's just like, now it's like, I, I either don't speak it at all, or I only speak like what I see yeah, in terms that's, of. That's why like, we call ourselves the Scorpio sisters. Cause we don't have time for that. Like lightweight fluff shit. <laughs> No, I value the breaths in my body, <laughs> however many I may have left. Like every single one of them is like, it's my pal. Yeah. yeah don't want to spend it on other so, stuff. That... So Cinco de Mayo is the anniversary of your accident or of, of like getting out of the hospital or what, what was it? So to, like, like go for the whole story here. Yeah. So 10 years ago, is it 10 years? It's 10 years ago. Like that. Bam. 10 years ago, I almost died. Um, yeah, so I was driving home from the gym, uh, the gym that I worked out in South Florida, uh, not worked out at, but worked out of, I'm a fitness professional and I was driving home. It was, uh, I had just gotten a Jeep the week before it was the week. No, not the week before it was like weeks, but I had just gotten new tires on my new, on my Jeep and it was still really new. I had it for nine months. Um, but it needed new tires and I got like, not that you freaking need this on the freaking highways of Florida, but for some reason I thought I really want to get the big knobby tires because I wanted to like go off-roading and do all the things. And I don't know what the deal was on this particular, like I, I, I'm like, I was going like 20 something around a curve, which was about 20 something, but it was rainy enough and there was enough construction going on. There was just like a little dip in, in the, the pavement on the shoulder. And I happened to drive off of it. Oh, just by accident, I was going around the curve and, uh, I guess, and I lost control of the, of the Jeep. All of a sudden it started fishtailing and then it got worse. And then I just spun out and then went right into a wall. And what they found out when they like looked at the accident, the tires, and, um, I guess they had put the, you know, the, the rim or the wheel or whatever the hell is supposed to go this way. Uh, but the tire was just off enough that that little with the speed and enough of a dip and enough of a drop that it knocked the tire off enough. So I'm driving and what I, it wasn't that I just started fishtailing, but I started literally feeling this on my, <laughs> like it dropped. And then I was on dun, 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 like, I'm trying to keep the wheels straight. I'm not sure what the heck happened there. And that was enough to throw my Jeep into a spin. And then, yeah, peace out. <laughs> I hit the, the wall. And then I woke up and I, I was just like, there was a car behind me, there was a truck and there was an 18 wheeler. None of them touched me. Don't ask me how nothing ran over, but none of them touched me. And, um, but I, like the air had, uh, airbag went off and, and like what I hadn't noticed, like I got out of the car, I could smell gas. I saw smoke. I didn't realize it was just like the, the powder from the, um, from when those airbags go off but I smelled gasoline and it was enough to be like, I'm going to explode in this car when I saw this, what I thought was smoke. And, uh, I like, <laughs> this is so nuts. I totally remember this. Like it was like, it just happened. It, I'm like two things came into my, this is how freaking crazy we are. I am at least. Where's my cell phone? Where's my computer? <laughs> I actually thought instead of jumping out of the freaking car, if I really thought I was in that much danger, which I realized after I wasn't, but I, the first two things that came to mind was, where's my phone and where's my laptop? And I literally couldn't find my phone, but I, like, I saw my laptop bag had been tossed all the way. I like reached back. Like, the first thing I did when it came true was like check my legs. Like I was like, my legs working or whatever. And I grabbed the thing and I grabbed the, I, I didn't find my phone right away. And I started running down the side of the freaking highway thinking my Jeeps, I was like literally like lost it. I thought my Jeep was going to blow up. So what I didn't know in the moment, and then when I ran far enough away, I literally like leaned up against the, the, the wall thing that separates the, the highway. And I just like, like slid down. What I didn't realize is like all the skin had been ripped off my face from the airbag from here, here, here. And so I was bleeding. So imagine what that must've looked like. I, I still remember the guy in the 18 wheeler as I ran back past him with my, like, my gym clothes and my, and my bag and my face. Bleeding. And he was just, I just still remember he was like, like totally like what the heck was going on oh and uh and then the people came out of the the cars see if i was okay called the ambulance all the things but 
that happened today at 11.33. Did you black out or you didn't? Black I blacked out for a split second. I blacked out, but not long enough, but uh, enough to give me a little mild concussion action, but uh, not, yeah, not like where I was blacked out for hours or anything like that, but I, I definitely went black. And uh, I just remember coming to, and like, first thing I it was like, do my legs move? I just remember doing that with my legs, like one knee, then the other knee. And then where's my phone? Where's my laptop? <laughs> so nuts. <laughs> like, so, I mean, think about how many times a day I might've been doing that every day, just programmed that way. So yeah. Anyways, I'm here. I'm alive. So you ended up in the hospital with your laptop. <laughs> I did. <laughs> my laptop and my phone came with me. So. Uh, that's how we got a hold of my partner at the time who met me at the hospital. And uh, yeah, yeah, and I'm still alive. But it changed the trajectory of my entire life. I just remember, I just remember being in the hospital when I was lying there in the gurney. They were going to go get me a, like a head scan and all the things. And he shows up and I just remember lying there and he, he like, like while I'm lying there, his head comes over. He's like, you know, babe, like the second I saw him, and this is somebody I, I adore and love and cherish. And I just remember, you know, the minute he said, are you okay? Oh my God, you're, you're, you're okay. And I'm so glad you're okay. And like, what happened? And I just remember like, this is not my life. I, I didn't say it out loud in that moment, but I knew in that moment, I just remember feeling this is not the life I'm supposed to be living. Wow. Like, and I know, I knew it in the moment. And I think obviously I always kind of knew it intuitively and I just was too afraid to, to make the, the big decisions and have those really courageous conversations with my life. But wow. that was a moment that I knew that the life that I was living was not what I was supposed to be living. And, and like five months later, I basically, I'd been planning it, but five months later, I literally uh, packed my bags and uh, into my little blue juke that I still have. Um, and that's why you were talking about bringing it full circle to like, I don't have a lot of stuff. It's like everything that could fit my, so I left uh, the house we were living in, uh, my partner at the time, my little dog Gaia, our dog Gaia, um, and I was at the time I was living 50 steps from the beach. Beautiful, uh, yeah, it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I had a really, uh, you know, I had a, what looked on paper to be a successful um, fitness career. Working, there was a lot of cele celebrities and pro trainers in there. What was that? Were you still doing like the fitness competition work and all that stuff? I had I had retired from um, being a fitness competitor, but I was still coaching and I was still like an athletic trainer and I was still working at one of the more prestigious South Florida gyms. Um, Weren't you and, like Miss World or Miss Universe or one of those like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th the t those 10 years marked my, uh, I'd done two world, I'd won two world championships. I was a Hall of Famer in my sport. Um, I did fitness. It was a fitness competitions. Um, the organization I competed for, we did obstacle course racing with fitness. It was kind of like Barbie meets GI Jane. <laughs> and uh, I'd done that for 10 years, done really well in the sport, done the magazine stuff, done infomercials, done all those things. And uh, it just looked, it was a life that looked really good on paper, but it was, it was, uh, I'm really proud of my accomplishments. Uh, and it was, uh, it was just a bunch of armor. Like I, I hid behind that persona. Interesting. Yeah. And that was what I used to validate myself. I really like, I, I buried my inner artist, became this like rock star athlete, uh, personality on the outside. And I was only going up like there. It's like, but that car wreck, that Jeep wreck, woke me up and I was just like, I left everything. And so like, I went from having all the things to nothing. Did people like comment on that when you like at that break, like the, let's say when you left Florida. Oh God. Friends and family, were they like, yeah. What are you doing? Okay. It, it, it was interesting because it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, like. This, Let me guess. It's where you find out who your friends really are. That was the first thing I really found out. Oh, girl. The thing is, like, you freaking know. You yeah. just don't really want to admit it to yourself because then you got to have really hard conversations with yourself and them. <laughs> I mean, I say you, but I mean, like, me. Yeah. Like, I knew. Yeah. Um, and, like, putting on the face when I, I could have just been more courageous with, uh, like, I didn't even know what the word transparency meant at the time. Um, and so, yeah, my devastated like family was like 
WTF, <laughs> you know, what the heck are you doing? Um, and I had, I'll never forget this one client, her name was Judy, uh, I'll keep the last name, but she's like, honey, <laughs> this like really interesting lady. She was just like, are you sure, are you sure you're not having a midlife crisis in the gym? She asked me this and I grabbed her by the shoulders and I was like, Judy, yes, yes, I am. And you know what? It's like, it's a midlife awakening because, and this was, I was like, I don't want to end up like you guys. I remember just saying that to her. I was like, all I see, and all I was seeing was like, this person's cheating on that person. This one's caught up on cocaine. This one's like embezzling this. This one's like stealing from that. This one's talking crap about this one. Gossip this, gossip that. I was like, it's so fake and not real. I was like, why would I want to live like this? And I was like, I want a different life and I don't know how to create it. And this is the, the thing is like, like I just, people were like, you're running away. And I was like, and I knew if I stayed in that life, I'd be running away. If I didn't listen to what was true for me, I'd be running away. And now in retrospect, could I have just leveled up my life and stayed and like, absolutely. If I had the tools and what I knew now, it's kind of like, if I knew now what I knew then, I would have a really different life. I might've made some different decisions because I would be a different freaking person, right? Um, but I wasn't empowered. Like I couldn't say I was an empowered woman. Um, I, was, I, was, I was hiding. I was playing a game I didn't even know I was playing. I was, um, it just like, I, I felt like an imposter. And like, it, it was beyond imposter syndrome, like that whole thing. It was more like, I knew I wasn't being real and I wasn't being honest and I wasn't being genuine to my genuine to myself. And, uh, and, and I was, and I was just sucking life out of people that I cared about around of, of around me because I was so disempowered that I could just see how I was also harming others being in the state people that I cared about. And I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to like fix it in that time, in that moment. And so all I knew back then was how to remove myself from a situation. That's that's one tool that I knew I had dialed in. And something, well, you know, this is a Scorpio. It's like when I just put the big ass X on something, I can compartmentalize that. And it might be a superpower, it might be a fault, I don't know, but in the it, it saved my life uh, because I was uh, in a really just coming off of being uh, having uh, attempted suicide a few years before that. Uh, just regaining my, my strength and regaining my focus. And, and, and there was just a really big life overhaul that needed to happen for me that now if like with what I know, and it's kind of like in retrospect, it's like what I know now I could do different then. Sure. But in that moment, those were my choices and I'm glad I made them. I have like zero regrets mm -hmm. and I've learned so much about that, but Yeah. So this Cinco de Mayo is 10 freaking years. Happy anniversary to me. <laughs> is amazing. Are any of those people still in your life? And like, yeah, the specific people from your life back then? Um, I, I would just say one person, my partner at the time, he's like one of my close, close friends. And I, like, I just, I, I just saw him a couple of months ago in, in LA and it's just like, we're still great friends and we're, um, it's just, it's a different, it's, it's almost feels like more of the relationship it, it, it should have been, been back then because it feels more, so much more real and so much more powerful. Um, any other people in my life back then, I would say some of my like favorite clients, mm. like people that I felt were like, this is a person that I'd want as a sister. And there was some clients that I am still sort of connected to that I, I, you know, some were just more acquaintance and just cool people. Because of course, there's always really cool people, but they're just acquaintances. And then there's a couple that were just a little, I was a little closer to. Um, they ended up on my retreats. <laughs> they're like, okay, you're not here, but we can come fly out to Costa Rica. I'm wondering if it was, if the whole thing was a vibrational shift that you needed to make, which it sounds like, oh, yes, yeah, it was. Totally. And did you need to walk away from everyone in that vibration or could some of them like, were you either evolving together or, or perhaps they were holding you in that other space and then you were able to circle back and, you know, 
be friends with them again or stay connected because you know there's there's like your inner vibration and then there's like the shit that's going on, on the outside of you yeah that's interesting that's a real that's super uh like I'm guessing that some of them knew who the real Sylvia was outside of you know the image or the 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 armor and I'm guessing those are the ones that are still somehow in your life or you had to walk away from everything and you actually really did have to walk away from everything you know who knows right like who really yeah. knows but it's just like if I check in with myself in terms of some of the people that are like that I still really cherish. Um, even some of them, I just feel like, like I'm, I'm, I'm a different type of human being. Um, and I needed to embody this. So I needed to remove myself from all of that, not because they're bad people in, in whatever way, shape or form. But it's just like, there's a different calling for me. And so if for, as a different calling, there's a, there's a different uh, kind of, like you say, vibration, different kinds of personalities, different kinds of belief systems, different kind of possibility thinkers. Um, I, I like thrive being around uh, really big, huge, massive world level thinkers. Anything that doesn't think on, like any conversation doesn't vibe on that level with that in mind, even if we're having, even if we're talking about a freaking pizza, <laughs> if that's not in the space, yeah. um, I, I feel, I, I don't know. I can, I can honor it. I can love it. I can still like, it's, it, I, can, I find it like, it's, it's great, but it doesn't fill me up. It actually, if I'm around it too much, I feel less of myself um, expanded and I can be around it enough to just love the people and appreciate them for who they are, but not like around it all the time because it doesn't juice me up. Right. So yeah, I don't know if that answered the question, but it's just like definitely, I would say absolutely a vibrational thing. And the vibrational thing, uh, I believe, just comes from a my mi like mindset, yeah. like what's a possibility. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, also, it, like you needed to be broken open a little bit. Um, it sounds like that happened a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, girl. I needed the freaking <laughs> two by four. <laughs> the freight train. <laughs> yeah, I need to be cracked open like a freaking Easter egg. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like it. Absolutely. No, I think, like, just from what I know of you, that's contributed so much to your range as a human. Like, you needed all of that. Um, like your your mind. It's not just your mind. Your whole being is so. Um, the word I'm looking for because it's not rigid it's it's strong it's like um strong from the deepest place mm -hmm. um but flexible too um and I wonder if you would have had that you know if you hadn't gone like this and then c crashed literally crashed <laughs> yeah. um, like would you have had that that le that like strength resilience um, cause you know, there's two kinds of training. There's the, like, just push, 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 push all the time. Yeah. And then there's the, like, be broken down to, you know, practically death. Yeah. And then start over. Um, and you had the start over kind that, that gives you an, an extra edge. Like if you went back to that, that kind of competition, you'd probably, you'd probably do it again. You you probably could, except that you now you now you don't want to. <laughs> not yeah, not like that. Like I'm not excited to get on a stage with uh, like in a bikini and plastic heels and and have like ten people tell me my worth compared to other people. <laughs> like that's the way. I see, I always did, even when I was competing. I was like, which is crazy because I never lost a physique round. Like it, it was. I was like, got on stage every time we went to worlds and like even when I didn't win the world championship, I was like first in physique round and stuff. And I like, it was the one I hated. <laughs> I can use that very strong word because I'm like, I would always be on stage doing my thing. And I was just like, wow, I'm standing here and there's like 10 people like basically like tallying me up against other women that I really like. 
Right. And you're the best. And you're the best. And you're better than them. Or they're better than you. How did you you. feel? How did you feel about yourself at the time? First of all, I didn't feel like the best. I I obviously definitely had something going on. If it was (laughs) right after that, I like attempted suicide. I lost all my identity. But it was like, it it always felt gross. And this is the crazy thing is like the promoter was such a cool freaking dude. Like what, like dad, amazing human being, just giving generous, amazing. Mm-hmm. So many of the women, and I can say this for, and I would say most of the women, I can't say all of them, but so many of the women were amazing freaking humans and giving their all and wanting to be the best and, and like training. And there was a lot of armor. And maybe it was the own, my own lens, my own perspective of what I was viewing. Cause it was, it was me. Right. And I was completely projecting possibly. Uh, but it was just like the, the idea of having to compensate with my, my physical looks and my body on stage to make up for what was missing on the inside is the way like in, in retrospect, I can see that about myself. So how I felt out there was like, I never felt like I deserved to be the winner. Even when I won my world championships, I, I remember the first one I won, I was like, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> the second one was a whole different experience because I had chosen to create it my way. Yeah. Um, and the first one, it was like, I was in a, a whole other relationship and it was, uh, you know, a, a different time. And I felt like I was doing it for a, a different reason. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but uh, the second one, the second world championship was, it was a whole other experience because I, I cultivated it. Like I had my favorite coaches, people that I loved. I was, I, I trained the way I I wanted to train like a professional freaking athlete. I surrounded myself by professional athletes. I got sponsorships. Like I, I, I went into it being a world-class dominating athlete. Like I, I went in there. It's like, I am the champion. Like I was training that way. And so it was a really different experience because I didn't feel like I was striving for everything because I was already embodying it. Um, And it was a whole different, like, I remember finishing the last event, not knowing who had won yet. And I was like, I don't care about the trophies. I'm good. That was the most amazing competition I ever had. Like I had people that I, my sponsors were there and and my family was there. And yes, yes, yes. I just, I didn't care. Sort of about that where I I was talking about being seen. Um, And it, one of my solo videos that I did. And, and it's almost like I talked myself into realizing this at the end. And I know this already, but once you feel seen, you just don't need anyone else to um, like getting the prize or winning the thing or being on stage or whatever it is, doesn't make any difference. You know, once you become the star or the, you know, if you liken it to like a celebrity or whatever, um, it doesn't matter. If you already have it inside, no, like that thing isn't going to give you the feeling. Yeah, it wasn't that thing. And it's like uh, the whole idea of discovering um, that through went, it. Your camera went out of focus. Oh, there, it came oh. back. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. Never mind. That's yeah. It. Talk, talk about being seen and then you go like all fuzzy focus. <laughs> That's freaky. Yeah. Um, my amazing aura just like knocked it out or like collective awesomeness. <laughs> just like, <laughs> well, don't even oh. get started about the woo and the magic. You know, I got the cling cling right here. Oh yeah. yeah. I love those things. I have like all of my things. Like every time I do one of these little talks, I have the things that are like relevant to the person. So this necklace, this is, this necklace is relevant to you, even though you don't know it. No um, way. Partly it makes me feel like a Mayan princess, but part oh, you are you're my queen girl um yeah exactly princess what am i talking um but no i bought it in india when i was in dharamsala like Beautiful. trying to trying to photograph the dalai lama that didn't work but i got a great necklace anyway it's <laughs> gorgeous be, i was in india like largely because you were here and making that possible isn't that isn't that where you you came and stayed with alex when i went to india Oh my goodness. I was like, I was where? I was like, yeah, I was at your house. I was sitting in that chair. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Yeah. I know it's funny. You know, you don't feel connected to my trip to India, but I feel you connected to my trip to India. Wow. I just always forget that that's where you were. You were in India. I just remember a really amazing month in Sag Harbor in that beautiful house sitting in that awesome chair. That was my office. (laughs) Um, 
Can we play with the clang clangs? Is there something cool that we could do? I don't, yeah, like let's, I haven't, I pulled them out of a drawer for Is that, can we do that on this call? I don't know, is that weird? Sorry? Is that a weird thing to do? No. <laughs> I don't it really care. I want to, I want to do it. Explain them to you, to the world, as I explain them to you. So these are dowsing rods, which yeah. I was introduced to by a man called um, the House Whisperer. And he, he's, he basically reads energy as it relates to houses and people. And he sees it, he feels it, you know, he helps with ghosts and all kinds of things. And he came here to Sag Harbor from mm -hmm. England for a while. And a few of us also had him come do private um, like readings of our houses. And I always felt pretty good about my house, but I was still like, you know me, I, if it's like a woo anything, I'll sign up for it. So <laughs> he came over and he had these rods, actually a different pair, not this actual pair. Um, they were a little bit skinnier and and I, he handed them to me because he wanted both of us to go through the house and just read the energy of different rooms. And I said, oh, wow. it's not gonna work for me. Like, I'm not magic, whatever. And he was like, oh, trust me, it'll work. And sure enough, like we just, you know, we took them and you sort of hold them at your chest height and loosely and straight up and down. And, you know, I usually click the energy off of them a little bit. And then I say, you know, show me yes. So let me actually think of it. Okay, so that's weird because that's normally a no for me. Wow. So let me let me do it again because something just here popped up. Um, Yahoo's trying to hack my account. Okay, so show me yes. It's so freaky how they move like that. I'm not really like grounded enough to be doing this right now because and they're a little bit high I'm a little bit crunched but because that those aren't the normal ways that it reads if I were like okay hold on let's just do this properly I'm gonna back up oh gosh my knees <laughs> okay so I would normally do it like this so I'd say show me a yes yeah so when I'm standing it works a little better yeah and then I would say show me a no and they cross. That's so. Cross. It's, I mean, you just holding them. It just always amazes me. Very. It's it's like a like a cup or something. Um, I don't know how to do, like. I'm I'm just a glass, right? And they're free to go either way. And I'm not leaning, and I'm not doing anything. That's so, so wild. I ask these series of yes no questions. I mean, it's just a way of reading energy, right? And um, but we did it around the house, and I was. I was astonished because we would go into rooms. He would just sort of show me the energy and the energy would be all closed. Then we went and did this whole thing. We, you know, sage and, and we had some uh, uh, Tibetan bowl. We had some chimes. Uh, we were clapping in different corners. I mean, he had different things for different rooms. Wow. Then we went around and did the whole thing again, both of us. He had one pair. I had one pair. And in every room, the energy had opened. And I was like, wow okay where can i get i want some of these things so i can always do that and you know do these readings and he just gave me his set and wow then, then i showed them to my friend britta and she was like oh my god those are so amazing and i think i think my friend laura had just said oh i'm getting some more do you want a set and i was like oh yeah britta wants some well in the meantime i loaned britta the ones that i had and her daughter fell in love with them and named them and all this other stuff. And, and then when I brought her the new ones, which are a little bit fatter, she was like, oh, could we keep the other ones? So, so I got the new little fat ones and she kept the other ones that were named like Daisy and something. <laughs> I love that she named them. That is so cool. Well, Britta, Britta does energy work. And so that's all like part of her life as well. And she's a shaman. And um, yeah, so, you know, they look like coat hangers and we love them. Um, but they're also, I mean, on the one hand, they're not simple to travel with. But on the other, as you know, like you've seen me travel with them. I just, I've seen you travel with them. Yeah. yeah. 
But I also travel with this guy, which is this my little pendulum. This one I love because it was actually created for dosing things. What what does that mean? It's oh, do actually dosing dope, like how many capsules? Like of um, I don't know, homeopathic like herbs or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so there's like a whole bunch of numbers and. But it also has, you know, a neutral and a weak, like yes, no, and then degrees of yes. I don't know if this comes out backwards for you or whatever. Yeah, but, no, yeah. that's so cool. But this guy, this guy is in my pocket, like pretty much always when I travel. Wow. I can ask, you know, ask a yes, a, you know, show me yes. And it'll go back and forth. And then I can say, show me no. And it's, well, in this case, it's going across. Sometimes it goes in a circle. That's so cool. Um, and so, and for different people, it, it works different ways. So like, you know, my friend Joanne, actually, she got some of these and she was the only person I'd ever seen where the answers were directly opposite. So for her, you know, cause we said, show me yes. And she got this and then show me no was this. And I was like, wow, okay, well, you're the opposite and that's, that's cool, but you need to know what your own yes and no is. And they're just, it's just another way of reading your own energy and people who are better at it or more sensitive would do it in their own bodies. Yeah. You probably do it in your own body. Oh, you I do it. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do it that way. I, I've seen people do it like this. Um, and then sometimes if I don't do it like this, I can just like, it's, it's freaky. Cause I, I can just stand mm -hmm. and I can feel the weight of, you know, it's like you wait for the lean, but I, I feel like I've done it so much that I can feel, I just put my awareness into my feet mm -hmm. and I can feel, oh, it's moving back into my heels. Oh, it's moving back into the balls of my feet. Like I can just feel it. And so I don't have to wait for the whole entire lean. It's just, I feel it sooner. And so, uh, but yeah, it is totally a practice. It's kind of like, uh, I would say like, let's say a, a musician with a, with a really good year. If you have a good ear, it's like you, you listen to music enough that you know when, oh, the guitar is just a little bit off the chord, you know? And it's just like, um, where somebody with an untrained ear isn't going to catch that or it might take a few tries or they need another instrument, let's say like the clanky clanks <laughs> or, you know, your whole body. So yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a big fan of a muscle testing and I think uh, I, it's, it's, it's wild stuff, but I, I don't think it's, it feels legit. It's like your own body is like an antenna. Your whole, whole that's, body is energy. That's why I found like, out what, a, that I had Lyme disease, B, which kind I had, C, when I, um, when I was having this crazy reaction, I had like, not uh, like high, not hives, but swollen. My whole face was just like an allergic reaction, wow. uh, it was like an anaphylactic shock reaction without the breathing aspect. Wow. Um, it was a kinesiologist yeah. who told me exactly what it was. I mean, I could have yeah. spent well, first of all, if I'd gone to a regular doctor, they would have said, here are your steroids. See oh, ya. yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. and I wouldn't have known what it was. Yeah. This guy said, you know, this is going to sound crazy. And I think you should get a blood test. But I think you have the alpha-gal virus. I think you're allergic to red meat. I mean, who says that, right? But he did it by muscle pushing testing. on my arm, muscle testing putting things in my fist or not. Sometimes he had them in his fist Yeah, and he would test against my arm. And then I went to get the blood test and a couple of days later, he said, you're not gonna believe it, but that's what you have. Yeah. Wow. I actually had to go to two kinesiologists on that one because the first one couldn't get it. She, she was like, I don't know, it feels like uh, mold or, you know, nuts or something. And I'd had a ton of celery juice. So I thought it was that, but no, I had, you know, this much, pork in a pork taco or something and the next day I woke up my eyes were practically swollen shut wow that's crazy and it took um I'm gonna say it took two weeks to figure it out like and and, and make a dent in getting rid of it wow um yeah it was pretty amazing Two weeks, at least that's, I mean, it was just two weeks, right? It wasn't like two years. Yeah, well, it's, crazy. well, actually we knew what it, we knew what it was faster than that, but actually, uh, oh no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Because I went to the first kinesiologist and she couldn't quite get it. So we were testing things and they weren't really working. And um, it was the second guy who 
really nailed it, but which isn't to, you know, to me that still says kinesiology works, <laughs> but, yeah. but it's not simple. Um, but you know, it's, it's, for me, it's better than going to a regular Western doctor who is basically looking at lists of, you know, well, you have these symptoms and yeah, symptoms is what we think it is, but it's all up here. It's all in your head. And, um, yeah. And symptoms and looking at your body as a system, like that's two totally, very totally different perspectives. And it's like, okay, let's adjust the system that's creating the symptoms. It's like that. I mean, that's what I, why I personally love kinesiologists or if we can find a kinesiologist or some kind of I don't know, different type of <laughs> more holistic uh, doctor that, that has like, is also a, a regular doctor. I mean, I've, I've had the opportunity to have that a couple of times and I was just like, wow. Cause then they get the way the, the Western doctors think and what would be normally prescribed. And they've got this whole other set of superpowers and tools and perspectives and uh, that I feel like is a whole other vantage. It's like you as a photographer and it's like, you've got like the couple of lenses but it's like, I really need to get that shot. And this is the freaking rock star lens. I need to like dial that shot in. And it's like, I feel like, yeah, if you can, if you can score a doctor like that, that's, that's a whole other world. I'm so glad that you found that. And I'm so glad that you believe in that. Cause yeah, yeah I'm a fan. It's, I mean, honestly, it's, it was Annette that, um, it, it, I'm going to give her full credit for starting that process. I mean, I was so, wow. sick. I was so, so sick the first time from Lyme disease. So she's the one who introduced me to her kinesiologist who, uh, cause I already thought I had Lyme disease. I went to the regular, like little, there's a clinic down the street from me and I went to see the doctor. She gave me a prescription for antibiotics. I took one and I thought I was going to die. I thought I was having a reaction to the antibiotics because it was wow. so violent and so fast. And it turns out I just, well, not only did I have parasites, but I had Babesia and it was affecting my brain and, and cause yeah. like swelling. And mm -hmm. um, so she'd given me the wrong antibiotic for the wrong kind of Lyme disease. And then she called me two days later and had the nerve to say, oh, you tested negative. You don't have Lyme disease. And I was like, fuck you. I just about died over this weekend. Wow. Yeah. And it, and, but thankfully, while I had been waiting for the answer from doctor number one, Annette had physically taken me to see her kinesiologist and, and she said, oh yeah, no, you don't have that other thing. You have this thing. You don't need that antibiotic. You need malarone, um, which is actually an anti-malaria um, drug. Wow. And that plus a few herbs that she gave me, plus uh, she said, you, you need to radically change your diet right now. Uh, like a hundred percent you need um, totally. no sugar, no meat, no dairy. It was basically like no acid, you know, like a, uh, I needed to go super alkaline. Yeah. Yeah. Plus and your sugar. diet needing to restore itself. Okay. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. No gluten, no wheat. She was basically like, you can have vegetables and some fish once in a while and no alcohol, obviously, because tons of sugar. And I, I was so sick that I just, I listened to her a hundred percent and I did all of it. Wow. A month later, I went back to see her and she was like, what, what have you done? Like, this is unbelievable. You, it seems to me like you're a hundred percent cured, but she's like, but let me test, wow. you know, and she, she does the muscle test again. She's like, it's gone. It's completely gone. Wow. Even she was amazed at how quickly. In a month. In a month. Yeah. That, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. And imagine if you had gone down the rabbit hole of being a victim <laughs> and disempowering yourself and like outsourcing your power to something that just didn't feel right. Yeah. You know, a whole system that doesn't feel right. And like where you'd be today. Well, you know, it, was, it was actually, it was part of the one, two punch because the whole, it was very much like your moment. Although you said that you looked at your partner and knew it wasn't right. Uh, mine, yeah, mine happened a different way um, because the weekend, the weekend I got sick was his son's wedding and I was supposed to be on a plane to go there. Mm -hmm. And I was so sick. I was like, I can't go. I can't go. But what does it mean if you go, you know, if you go to someone's wedding, I mean, then there would have been family photos and all this other stuff. And he was already having an affair that I didn't oh. know about. So 
the whole farce of it would have been just profoundly painful, I think, if I had gone through with it. Wow. And I think on some level, my body knew what was happening. I, I okay. did, because I remember, I remember watching the woman interact with him, because we all worked together. Uh-huh. And I remember watching them interact, and, and I was like, God, if she wasn't so young, that would be a problem. And then I find out months later, and I was like, oh, my, I knew. My body, your whole body knew, yeah. Uh, like, Everything, yeah, your whole thing knew. So yeah, we, totally. Like, like, Sydney gets crazy about ticks and stuff out here, and I say, you know what? It's not ticks that cause Lyme disease. It's stress. And the, um, the stress that I was going through in the lead up to that wedding was huge. And then I found out just, at, so then I got sick. Then I saw him, I don't know, two weeks after that, maybe. And then I like, I figured out the affair situation and oh. literally exploded my whole life. And it was, you know, a week before our 10th anniversary. Oh my goodness. So the level of, the level of stress that I was yeah. dealing with was like up here, but I had also come out of being sick. So I was already on a road to healing and I mean that, you know, that it was a pretty messed up time for me and it was yeah, a whole, a whole year totally. of messed up, but like you, like, you know, you have to rebuild from from the ground. I think rebuilding from the ground is a much better way to build a good foundation. Girl, I feel like I had to, I had to like get all up underneath the ground right into the freaking <laughs> dirt and swamp and manure. <laughs> Go right into turn all that into compost. Like it's just like you, you like I always think of trees and just like they're like these amazing things but like all the good stuff, all the life, all the stuff is like rooted it underneath. It's like equally as majestic underneath you look at root systems they're freaking fascinating right and it's just like I'm like oh yeah okay that's okay I was just developing my root system <laughs> uh, but it had to go deep and dark and um and I think that's the thing and I think that's kind of like a I don't know if it's generalizing saying it's a Scorpio trait it's like the ability to be able to be able to be with darkness I, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. I won't speak for the whole entire freaking <laughs> zodiac sign of Scorpios. Um, I'll speak for myself. It's just like the ability to go deep and dark um, and find resilience in that and find and trust there to be power in that is something that I've learned to cultivate. Like if it's, if it's getting, if it, it's juicy and it's just like, it's an invitation actually. And so now I see it as very different, whereas before, and like, you know, obviously like knock on wood that, <laughs> that, you know, I'm in an empowered state right now. I'm in a self-resourced state right now. I'm in a good place right now. Who knows, like, you know, what else things, but it's just like, when I think of all the stuff that I've survived is like, there's, you know, the, oh, I don't even know how I'm freaking alive. Like, you know, being molested as a kid, uh, physical, mental, emotional abuse growing up, grew up in the freaking ghetto and like had a gun put to my freaking head. <laughs> um, like d really disempowering marriage, uh, cheated on by like several women that were in my uh, group. Like I actually coached a bunch of them. It was like, it's, it, it, it's crazy to find out what happens in, in that marriage. And um, having survived that, then attempted suicide, like been homeless, like all, all the fit. And I almost lost my life just over a year and a half ago, just because I just dumb stuff. I, I was not in a good place mentally, emotionally, and, and didn't take care of myself. All my organs almost shut. I was in the hospital for a freaking week. All my organs shut down. And I just like, but one of the things I really learned, and now this <laughs> pandemic, I was just like, I feel like I've trained my entire freaking life for this moment that's going on on our, on our planet. And I'm just like, first of all, I'm going to fucking die at some point. <laughs> like I got skin, I'm in this body, but there's something in me that I believe like, you know, it's keeping our hearts and the trees, the freaking sun shining, whatever that intelligence is. And it's just like the ability to, to just find the light and to, and while I'm still holding on to the dark, really able to be and find the lessons, find the teachers, find the gifts. Like they're, they trust that it is some serious ass contrast that's showing me something that I'm either not looking at, uh, you know, unavoiding un unconsciously, 
Um, it's time for me to see this stuff. It's time for me to face this stuff, this underlying stuff that's like poisoning my body from the inside. I just feel like I, I just see them as, this is going to sound super Pollyanna and it's so not, it's just, I've done it so many times at this point. It's, there's almost like a, it's almost like a system. It's just like, oh, it's like, there's something I need to pay attention to. It's such a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's such a gift. It's such a voice. It wa it's, there's a voice here that's wanting to be heard. And, and like, if I can feel and experience that from the inside and be with it and, and like, and, and be in the listening, I, I just find there's so much magic and so much power and so much strength and so much energy. Like I'm about to turn freaking 50 and I've never felt so young in my life. And I, and I still have stuff that comes up with family, with right. stuff. And I'm just like, I'm about to be a half a freaking century. I'm so proud of myself that I even <laughs> survived a half a century. And I feel amazing. And so, and, and when I look at everything that's happened, I, yeah, I just, uh, I, I think there's opportunity there and it's really up to us to really excavate that. If there's people that have, have really survived some interesting, crazy stuff. I was reading up on Viktor Frankl from the Holocaust, mm -hmm. um, and Frank recently, I was just like, you know, going into those darker times in our history and for some, for some reason, uh, with everything that's going on in the world. And I just really realized I was like, wow, like they're so much is going to sound so messed up and because I feel super privileged even with everything that's happened like I'm, I feel I'm privileged and uh, maybe if I was living in Africa I would be saying something different I don't know but I've, I've people human beings that I've come across that have experienced some crazy dark stuff in some crazy parts of the world survived some insane things and able to rise up to be lighthouses on this world in this world mm. like just bright shining freaking lights and they've they, it's resilience to this whole other level and it's like they were able to harness the power from that darkness it didn't it might have consumed them for a moment but they were able to like implode and then like supernova style <laughs> light up the whole freaking cosmos yeah and I, I just think there's so much energy so much potential energy in those experiences easy to say right when things are going well well yeah but you know what i mean those feelings are not limited well not feelings the um that's not limited to people that have overcome horrible experiences because yeah. i know some crazy wealthy people who are some of the most depressed people yeah. on earth and and there's i think it's not it's not about um the circumstance as much as it is like how you feel about the circumstance or the expectation of a thing um i mean yes there there are things that are truly horrible like any of the examples you just used but there are also people just living a lie even just your story of like you were living your own lie and living oh, totally. a lie is one of the most painful things I think anyone can do. And the lie might look like privilege. The, the lie might look like you have everything going right. You have all the money in the world. You are Whitney Houston. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, that, that mental um, resilience that you have, you earned it. And a lot of people earn it the hardest way possible they walk right up to like i, I think i'm going to kill myself and i've been there i like i lived that way probably from about the age of 13 or maybe younger and then one day and it was actually related to the end of that relationship you know one day i went there one last time where i was like i don't think i can live any longer wow and i reached out for help and I reached out for help to exactly the right people, which, um, you know, that's, that's a huge thing for anyone yeah. who has ever suffered from depression, you know, like, I, I mean, I used to live in, when I lived in Moscow and I was so depressed and, and my husband would go off to work and he'd put little post-it notes on the headboard and be like, call this person, call that person, do this, do that. And I just wanted to punch him, like really, because depressed people can't call people. They don't call people. They don't like reach out and ask for help. That's, that's just not how depression works.
worse. Not when you're in that. I, I mean, at least not for me when I was in that state, it was, it was the opposite. The opposite. For, exactly. Yeah. For me, it was, I can't speak to any, for anybody else. Right. But for myself, definitely not like, it was the opposite. <laughs> so yeah, the opposite. No, I, and then as I resourced myself and as, as I got more, you know, empowered, but it's just like, it took, it took a practice of learning and trusting myself to resource myself with little right. incremental steps. Eventually started to really own, like, I loved what you said about, I asked for support and I asked the right people for support. Oh, like that's a big one, man, because yeah. it's like, yeah, that's a big, that's a big one. Really knowing and trusting yourself. It's just like, I need to ask for help. And the, these are the people I can. Because to. now I see traumatic experiences as experiences. Yeah. There's a gift in them. Yeah. They're a test or yeah, they're just shitty experiences, but yeah. they, um, I don't let my thinking run away with me. The, I used to, I used to believe the shit that was going on in my head sure um and and really be able to talk myself into such a dark place and I, I, if i if i get anywhere near that now i actually can stop myself and say okay you feel shitty right now yeah like, yeah totally feel it as opposed to push it out or put on the armor or you know whatever society tells you to do um grab the addiction oh, we should we should mention how well we didn't meet because of that group but um yeah. with addiction no, no no i was just thinking about uh kyle's group and i was thinking like you're actually the third person from our fab 50 that i've spoken to oh cool oh my god Jeez. yeah i think that's more than any other sort of single way that i know people but but I, that's not how i know you i mean i i joined that group because you said you were doing it and you were so enthusiastic. Um, but I just know that that's one of Kyle's things he loves to talk about is the way that people grab addiction in order not to feel a thing. Um, Girl, and even like, I started to find the things that like were my superpowers become the Achilles heel, like it became my kryptonite. It's just like, I started to hide. And I didn't notice this until we did the Fab 50. It was like, oh, I'm hiding in exercise, something is supposed to be super healthy for you, but that's where I would go and hide. Like, you know, it's like, oh, let me go and, and like change my state. Let me go empower myself. Let me get a breather. Let me take some space from this thing. Let me go move my body, get in my body. And um, I can tell when I'm just using it as another way to avoid and hide. Meditation was a big one. It's like, oh, you know, meditating, you know, get in the zone, peace, love, fucking rainbows. <laughs> awesome <laughs> and if you're using it to avoid stuff and not look at things because it feels all great like i just like oh i and I, and i say you to me because i'm like i doing the fab 50 crew i i realized i was like wow my my i don't want to say my addictions but addictive patterns that i had totally picked up along the way in my life i'd been addicted to so many different things had shape shifted into like the more socially acceptable stuff. Even social media is way more socially acceptable of an addiction. Alcohol, drugs, sex addiction, all that stuff's not so, you know, attractive, but it's like been there. And then all it did was kind of shape shift food, binging, sugar, coffee. I'm like, it's still a freaking addiction. I'm still running away from stuff, you know? Oh, let me do this. Like I started, <laughs> there was a time where I was using self-care to like, just avoid the stuff that I really, oh no, I'm, you know, I gotta like raise my vibe. <laughs> and I'm just like, yo, bitch, you're hiding. <laughs> I really had to get off, awesome, like honest with myself and find the self compassion. It's just like, wow, like, and then find self compassion for the part of me that was judging. Mm -hmm. Because I was told, it, it was just, it, it, and I was just like, wow, like, it's amazing how these parts of ourselves can just shape shift. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just find and it fascinating. And they keep I find coming it fascinating. back forever. They, like, oh. seriously, just when you think, oh, oh, I got this one now. Like, oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's coming right back at you one more time. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I think that's the beauty of life. Like, I just, like, it's like I look at everything. Like, I, I love living by the ocean. I live here in California. And just, like, it's, 
like watching that, like watching just the tide itself come in and out. Like, you know, you watch the tide come in and out this way, but sometimes I just to stand this way and I watch it and mm-hmm. it comes in at different velocities and, and it pulls out and there's the undercurrents and all that stuff, but there's like the high tides and the low tides within the day. And then the higher or lower ones with like around the moons or the seasons. And I'm like, it's so like freaking life. Right. And it's just like, it's always going to come in. It's always going to go out. And I've just learned it's cool. Like, find for me anyways just find the beauty in it and beauty is one of my values like I value beauty and it's like and because I value beauty and I've created that as a value I I I've trained my reticular activating system to look for it even in the shitty stuff I can look at pile of garbage and find beauty in there and I can actually say that now right and I think yeah it's just something I, I just find fascinating about as humans. It's like, oh, okay, that's all the dark, bad stuff that we want to transform and transmute into this. And, and it's cool and it is, and it serves something. And I think there's so much grace that opens up when, from, when I can just breathe it all in and just feel, wow, like, just thank you for this. I'm yeah. sick a few it's weeks actually, ago. It's funny to me that you, I mean, you call your, program I guess or you did when we first met it was because you had a program called revolution gratitude that's what it's called it's done it's, full circle. it's, it's, it's back to full revolution gratitude I was like it's always been revolution gratitude yeah awesome because for me you are like you're the queen of gratitude because you you are so oh. um, expressive of it all the time you know verbally actually the things you do the way you do them the way you show up the way mm. you you know yeah the the way you do everything um it's so full of gratitude and it's so obvious to me that you ooze that into and you and then you just give it away constantly constantly like neither one of us has really figured out the trick to making money (laughs) um but both of us love to give it away whatever it is yeah Um, you know it's so interesting i've like been making peace with that and ironically it's it's coming in more often. So that feels really good. But my word for this year was prosperity. And I was just like, I want to be able to see prosperity in everything. What does Mm -hmm. prosperity feel like in everything, like in my bowl of soup, you know, and like, what does it look like as I'm weeding out the garden, like prosperity? It's like, how can I experience that and just receive it from life in every freaking moment? And it just, uh, I had to pick up a dead little mouse yesterday and I buried it in my garden. I have like a little mouse cemetery. I know it's super creepy, but I was like, what am I going to do? Throw it in the garbage? I was like, no, man, you're compost. <laughs> Did a little freaking, this like very ceremony thing for it. And I just like, I just looked at it. I was like, wow, it's got such a beautiful tail. I just like, I was just fascinated by life, you know? And I, I just like, it's a dead freaking mouse. <laughs> Most people freak out. And I just like, there was a time I would, not that I wanted to like hang out and play with it or anything, but I just like, I felt reverence for the opportunity to get to return this little creature that had breathed life probably a few hours before and, and like return it to mother earth and let it do its magic with whatever. It's going to be part of my freaking Jasmine bush out there (laughs) in the next few months. It's right. It's like, it becomes back to dust. And I, I just see so much reverence. I feel experience so much reverence. And I just think, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. I just feel it's a practice, it really is a practice. Well, I, I yeah. also think that the, the work that you have, like, like you just said, you know, you've been preparing this for this your whole life. <laughs> not always by choice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not yeah. Really by choice, but I think it's true. And I think that you are not only really well prepared to handle this pandemic and and the shift that it's uh, creating, but you're prepared to handle the people that can't handle it. Like there are gonna be a lot of people that are gonna have a new feeling for their bodies or their Mm -hmm. soul, their level of gratitude and what they were doing in the world. And they're gonna need guides. And you're Mm -hmm. you're one of those. That means so much, thank you. No, I really, really like, yeah. Yeah. I I think 
I, I call it like waking up Jedi goddesses because I really believe that that Jedi goddess lives with, I know it's so super woo and stuff and I'm a big Star Wars fan, <laughs> thanks to my dad. But it just like, it, that magic exists with all of us and that sense of reverence was, exists with all of us. I really believe that with all, and, and that connection, that like the force, like life force, source energy that breathes through us as us. It, it, there's, I cannot not feel reverence for that especially I, I watched my dad take his last breath uh exactly six years ago wow. and uh and I think like those different conversations with death like suicide conversation with death deep breath conversation with death you know the bacteria that almost took out all my organs about a year and a half ago like conversation with death and you know watching life like all these different perspectives in terms of conversations it gives me a really intimate relationship to death which cannot not give me a really powerful intimate relationship with life and the magic and the privilege that it is to even just get to have another breath especially with what's going on in our world today and so yeah I just really feel really fortunate to get to be alive in this really incredible time in our history wow yeah I really do so yeah. I'm going to keep, so I wanted to ask you about, because you always did a big um, Mother's Day retreat, and I'm actually yeah. going to off my video as I go plug in my computer because it's dying. Um, sure. But I wanted you to say something about why you started that, why it was around Mother's Day, mm -hmm. um, and are you going to do them again? I mean, do you, do you think you'll do one next year, for instance? Um, so Sasha was my... Uh, partner in that and the whole reason we even started that was honestly it was it was me it was just going to help her lead or do a retreat and she was like no no no, you got to leave this one with me and that's it, it originally started because I really wanted to help out a friend I was living in Costa Rica at the time so that's how it kind of like it happened it was me my desire to like support another human being and do it and she she was like yo sister <laughs> you need to step up <laughs> like it's time for you to lead this stuff and what really called to us was a couple things one is we wanted to get women into nature the other is we wanted obviously to get them into their bodies in nature um, and with that sense of adventure. And so we created like these adventure workshops. But I think the biggest thing was like we planned it the week before Mother's Day because I, I feel like for her and I, we'd spent our entire lives. And I'll speak for myself here, but it's like just noticing how we like I, I reached out, I would reach out and outsource my power and give away and trying to have my parents, <laughs> other people fulfill those needs. And so the whole journey was, is a journey in terms of supporting women and remothering themselves, rebirthing themselves and what it looks like to actually um, really become like the queen of your freaking life. And we wanted to take women on a physical adventure journey where they can experience that, not just talk about it and sit around in a retreat and have these kind of like talky talky kind of things, but really experience themselves being that. And what does it look like to rebirth yourself um, in a very powerful metaphorical way where they actually genuinely experience <laughs> massive crazy shifts. But then once you're like, really understand what it means to be the queen and like empowered in your life what does it look like to shift into what like is known as like a high priestess one that that empowers other women to be that for other women right and that but was everyone and, here have to be you didn't have to be a mother to be a part of it no it? i'm not a mom she wasn't a mom at the time no 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 not not at all most of our our ladies were not moms but there were were enough there was half of them or about half of ish that were moms that we wanted to make sure it was the week before mother's day so that they could go home and have the day they land and then the next day get to celebrate mother's day be celebrated as mother celebrate their mothers and honestly like do it from a place of them like their own self mothering and self ownership they were able to receive being a mother so differently and, or i i know for the ladies that weren't moms being able to really have revere their mothers in a way that they they didn't before and uh some of those women from our retreat are like actually in my group now like and it's it's I'm so proud of that retreat. And yeah, can, will we have it again? That's the plan. I, ironically, I'm talking to Sasha again this week 
to, um, and she's going to be our guest mentor in my program next week because like, it, it, it's like, it's in the air. You can just feel it. So who knows what's happening with this pandemic? Yeah. Would you, I, well, so yesterday we, I remember we were asking each other, like, what are the five things that you would want uh, or that you want back in your life? Oh. Yeah. Oh, so I love that question so much. And I, I wish I'd continued to think about it yesterday, but what, let's see if it's different from yesterday right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, hugs. Mm -hmm. I think the idea that our beaches have opened up and like, we have this sort of like permission <laughs> to go, but you have to maintain physical distancing. And so it's like getting together with a couple girlfriends and, but we don't get to hug each other. And we don't get to, it's going to be like physical distancing. It's not the way I roll with my people. Yeah. Like I'm a very huggy touchy, like sort of person. So hugs, big one. Um, being able to see people's faces. Mm -hmm. Forget whether they smile at you, say hi to you, just be able to see a human being's face. I notice myself looking at people's eyes more because obviously that's all that's, <laughs> for some people they've got everything and it's like justifiably. So there's some fear there. Right. So being able to see people's faces, it's a big one. Um, like that sense of levity. Like I'd go to the grocery store before and I was just like, Oh, I'm going to like, not one of my favorite things to do, but I love filling up my cart and seeing all the fruits and vegetables. And that's just like nourishment and all the things. But now it's like, there's a weird protective vibe at the grocery store. And, and so I have to really, I literally plug myself in and I'm listening to affirmations in my ear as I'm walking through the grocery store. Wow. Oh yeah. Because I'm just like, I, I got to remember cause it's, I can find myself getting sucked in and I was just like, yeah, I was like, how, you know, how can I resource myself rather than protect myself and how, so I can stay open still honoring that protective energy. Right. So there was that and like being able to go into the grocery store with like that sense of ease and levity. It's right. a big one I miss. Like um, travel. Like <laughs> leaving their fear. Like people are leaving fear in the grocery store as they walk around. Um, there's, there's an energy of fear. That's not fun at all. When you go into those kinds of places, kinds of places, kinds of places, kinds of places. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> and I, think oops. I think the, are you still there? Yeah, are you still there? Yeah. Okay, it just got a little weird there. Um, yeah, the, the, the fear and like just noticing my own response. I was like, oh, wow, there's something for me to, to work on here because it's just like how other people's fear like either shrinks me in some way. I'm like, how can I stand in my own power, still be loving, compassionate, understanding, even though I may not have the same belief systems as them or the same fear level or whatever. Um, and I, and I haven't figured that out yet. And so I've been conscious of like putting these affirmations in my ear. And so I'm in a receptive open place and I can still be empathetic and, and making sure that it's make sure I'm like protecting myself from fear. I'm like, dude, that's fear. <laughs> that's fear. <laughs> that's covert fear masquerading as like, whatever. I like, I catch myself all the time. So there's that. So I'm really excited for whatever own channel clear and like bright. I, I do my best. And it's just, I, I look at it as a, as a freaking workshop. Every time I go to the grocery store, which I have to do go tomorrow, I just like, okay, workshop mode, you know, okay, what do I want? I actually set an intention. How would I want to experience? What am I going to be attentive to? So I keep getting myself back into my body and, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing it. Cause I, I, I can see myself kind of judgy. <laughs> yeah, I, I can go down there, but let's not. Um, and I think the fourth thing I just wanted to say was also like travel. Yeah. Really like, and like, and I would say travel, like along that is spontaneity. Like yes. I can be spontaneous here, but it feels more contained now. Uh, we're spontaneous before it's like, let's go on a road trip. <laughs> And I didn't have to look as like, is that open? Or are we even allowed to do that? Like, no. yeah, we're not. I know. <laughs> I know. How amazing does that, uh, that Sicily thing look, right? That I posted on Facebook. Uh, did you oh. see? Oh, you, you didn't see it. Or did you? Your Italy trip? Uh, yeah, the Italy trip. Yeah, man. I was pick me, pick me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. That's that's what, uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, wait, do I have to look and see if I can even go to Italy? And you know, and by the way, they were hit as badly as the U.S. or worse. So, oh, God, I mean, 
going to Italy is like one of the great pleasures of the world, you know, and I know go feels painful. Uh, yeah. Like going to Costa Rica sounds amazing. Yeah. It, yeah. And I, I just try to be mindful of the fact that whatever my belief systems are, whatever, um, like I might think or believe and stuff, it's just like, how do I support the collective and, and not let myself go into this? Cause I can go there where I'm like, well, screw it. I'm just going to do it anyways. I can totally be that. And I, and, and I'm like, how can I be part of the experience without being part of that experience? Like, how can I be part of humanity and move with it? And at the same time, not get caught up in that. Like, and I, and I have no answer for that. Uh, I just know that, yeah, that, you know, the, that sense of, of freedom and, and spontaneity, like can really threaten people in terms of, it's, it's like selfish and you might be spreading the thing and you're just like, and I, and I get, I can get that. I can understand that even if I believe things differently. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just like, I haven't found the place where there's the balance between making sure I'm not trying to manage other people's expectations and experiences and making sure I'm not cutting myself off from humanity because I'm like, then I'm probably doing that inside internally to myself. Like, yeah. Well, I actually look at it, I look at this experience as an experience, you know, the, the, like any, sh I look at it like any shitty experience and that is give it time, feel it now. It's not forever. Nothing's forever. So yeah. just feel this now and, awesome. and notice how much you want to travel. Notice that that's a value that you're going to pursue afterwards because that's how I feel. I'm like, yep. First thing, so, getting on a plane. <laughs> five although i have a really good hugger right here but hugging Aww. my kid i don't get to hug my kid um Aww. you know seeing family uh travel like all the things that you said are yeah are absolutely among my top five values so that's just good to know and now i'm glad i have a list and like there will be a time when boom i can i can take action toward them. Um, and I'm fine with that. I, the fact I can't right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to turn the, the value, the dial up on other values that I feel like. Yeah. Like, it's like, I really want to feel the connection with my people and, and the hugs. I'm like, Oh wow. How can I do that with myself? How can I reach out more and connect with other people? I'm, I'm, tr I'm looking for ways to still fulfill those needs. And I, I don't have the answers, but I, but I do keep my, you know, I, I keep, I keep the faith and faith. And I also keep them like, what can I empower myself with or like right now in this moment? So I can at least experience somewhat of something of the vibe that we think I would get from, you know, travel. Um, right. Although I look at, like, I was just talking to a friend of mine today about Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> Fiji's looking really good. <laughs> I mean, in my imagination, who knows what it looks like right now for reals, but it's just like, yeah, the people, the culture, I'm like, oh, like, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's also worthwhile to make yourself lists, you know? Okay. So A, I mean, we all knew we weren't going to live forever, but you're not going to live forever. And if your list had to be limited and you couldn't go everywhere you want to go in the rest of your life like what matters to you which which places matter to you who who matters you know all of it um, yeah yeah I feel like I feel like there was a lot of stuff that I did in my life where I'm like yeah that wasn't really on my list of places I wanted to go I but I went anyway like you know yeah. the might as well like I don't know if I really have time for I might as well like I feel like I want to be a little more intentional and uh, focused and yeah, I really, really want to go to that place um, as opposed to, yeah, that might be nice. And, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, it's, it's a different feeling. Um, yeah. And what does that look like to create that possibility? Like starting now, you know, like you, you've been obviously doing a little bit of research. It's like, Oh, here's like some really good deals or, you know, whatever. But I just, uh, what does it look like to actually plant the seeds and nurture that, that value, that need, that feeling, that idea, that insight, that vision 
uh, whether that looks like writing about it or dreaming about it or talking about it, whatever that looks like. And, and, and then tangible actions, like what I can do to actually get myself set up. So when it's possible, I can go like, I, I just feel like I've been more in that action, that mode. Um, and just cultivating the soil so that like when it's ready to pop, <laughs> it can pop. And uh, yeah, hopefully continue to continue that practice. So, there, I mean, we've already been doing this a while, but I just want to ask you one last question. Um, yeah. Because you are, you are way more multicultural than anybody would know just by a, a <laughs> conversation with you or whatever. But I mean, you are, you know, part Latina, part Canadian, part American, like, how are you feeling right now about being where you are, like in California? And yeah, oh, that's so interesting. So I'm actually not part of like, I, I live here, I'm a resident of uh, the US. So I'm, I'm part European, uh, it's Italian and Spanish, and then part Uruguayan. Um, and then I lived in Canada, I grew up in Toronto. And then I lived in a, whole, a bunch of different places around the world, the States being one of them. This is where I've been the longest, 21 years. And so living here in the States with all of this going on, there's a couple of things. One is I feel really lucky and privileged, again, uh, fortunate, blessed. Um, then there's the big like, what the? <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I guess I'm just trusting. I'm just trusting, I guess, one day at a time. Nobody freaking knows. It just doesn't feel like anybody freaking knows. Even the leaders of this world have no clue. And any of you believe any of the conspiracy theories? Like, do, do we really freaking know anything? And, I, and I'm like, you know what? I got zero control over any of that stuff and what I have control over right now is like this moment right now, what can I do to make sure that I'm taking care of resource and I'm supporting the people around me? Because I believe that ripples out into the world. I really do believe that. And it's like, if I can't control what's going on in parliament, <laughs> if I can control what's going on, on the other side of the planet, at the very least, I can create an environment. I, I can make an impact here. You know, there, I don't know if you ever heard this little story, a little metaphor, I don't know if it's a metaphor analogy, what you freaking call it, but it's just like a little kid walking and there's like all these starfish on the beach that wash up and he's going up one by one and there's like thousands of them and he's throwing them into the freaking back into the ocean and somebody comes up to him and says, you know, that's not really going to make a dent, right? You know, that's not really going to matter. And he picks one up. He's like, well, it matters to this one. <laughs> he throws it back. It matters to this one. <laughs> like, it's like, that's what I got control over. I mean, I'd be able to. And I just, Never. Think, yeah, yeah. And I just, so I go about my day that way and it just feel I find the levity that I want comes in that way. I love that. You know what? That's how I feel about life too. I like that one. Yeah, it's you a good can, little story. The one-to-one, -one, whatever impact you make is the impact you make and that ripple matters. Yeah. Every story matters. Yeah. Love it. Thanks, T. I think we should end on the starfish story. That's a really good one. The starfish story, yeah. I love it. Oh. Awesome. Girl, thank you so much for letting me jump on this and chat with you and ramble on and explore and all the things. So I really appreciate your yeah, your light in the world. You're amazing. Well, so are you. We'll do this again. <laughs> Thanks, Mama Sita. Thank you. Oh, and happy Cinco de Mayo. Happy 10th anniversary of your yeah, life. Yeah, my life. <laughs> Glad you sorted that out the way you did. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, we wouldn't be friends. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. I love you. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye. Bye, bye love.